it seems like we, we basically finished the fourth bit, at least chapter two, right at the end of class, that's my memory. Did we do anything past that? All right. Have access to that, like, you like that. There should have Yeah, okay. it was just a mix up with one number and like, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it got resolved. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So, we're not going to start talking about motion itself. The first chapter that we dealt with dealt with sort of because of changes in motion, the forces. Now let's actually talk about what motion actually is. And, and motion itself is a rather vague term, so we have a couple other descriptive words. And these, vector and scalar. Now there are certain words that automatically, as soon as you see it, you should be thinking that's a vector quantity, direction matters. And so the first one of such is called position. Now there are various symbols that I use for position. I usually use X. But sometimes Y, sometimes Z, sometimes R, sometimes S. Those are the five main ones that I use, but X is, is, tends to be my go-to. And a couple of things about position. The SI unit, so the SI unit, the international standard unit for position is meters. And I'll give myself some more room now by scalars down the board just a bit. Position is where an object is with respect to, that's WRT, with respect to the origin. Assuming most of you have done at least some basic graphing so you've got your x, y planes here. In the case of a graph, this is the origin right here. In the case of a number line, you've got zero. That's the origin right there. In terms of latitude and longitude, longitude zero is somewhere in Western Africa, I think. It's been a while since I looked at it close. So you've got the Greenwich Mean. So you have some line going through England. That does hit Africa, right? And the equator is running right there too. So somewhere in typical uh, geogra geographic or geography, uh, term zero is somewhere in Western Africa. Now in physics, we can de determine where the origin, where, where we want the origin. So usually it's the starting point, but not always. And there will definitely be a question on the first test where it is not the starting point. All right, so the next term that is automatically a vector term is called displacement. Bless you. And the symbol is just a capital delta in front of whatever letter you're using for position. As capital delta means change. So if I had a capital delta followed by T, that's the change in time. Oh, that's not a D? This right here, that's a capital, it's a triangle. Oh, I'm going to get away with It's a capital delta, it's a Greek letter. Uh, when I was doing IT consulting, the, the office where I worked, you were broken into one of three groups. You were either tech, process or what's called change management. It's as you have an organization go from one type 
software to another. It, they get into the training and the psychological aspects of it. And the change management group called themselves Delta Force because Delta means change. So we basically have two definitions of displacement. It's either change in position thus the delta in front of whatever you're using for position, change in position, or it is where an object is, with respect to the starting point. There is a scalar analog of it. Let's squeeze that over here. The scalar analog is called distance. And the symbol for distance, it depends on the textbook, but I would tend to use the symbol for distance as just like delta x, delta y, whatever I'm using for position, except I don't draw the vector symbol over it. I think Hewitt just uses the lowercase d, or he writes out the word distance. Now, for those of you who've done, I guess it shows up in chemistry, you talk about displacement of a fluid. I'm not getting anything. I got one look of recognition there. Uh, it's related to the fact that you look at where the level of the fluid is compared to where it was. So in that sense, it's the same type of displacement. The standard, the international standard unit for displacement is meters, just like it is for distance. So let's talk about the difference between these two things. So let's say that I have some sort of map here, and I'm starting here. So this is my starting point. And this is some arbitrary spot that I've chosen to be zero. So my initial position is a vector that goes from wherever zero is to wherever I'm starting. Now, the shorthand for writing initial position is I'm going to use one of those letters up there for position. And then I'm just going to put a little subscript, put a little subscript I down here to indicate initial, initial position. This is for the scalar angle. No, no, this is because I needed room. Oh. Yeah, no, this, I'm talking about position right here. I'm doing the vector stuff. Now, I go from here to here. I've now moved to a final position. So this is my final position right here. The F meaning final. And my displacement is the difference between those two or where I am relative to where I started. This is my displacement. Just double checking, I have not done the I'm faster than Usain Bolt routine yet, have I? Mm -mm. Okay. All right, so let's say I lived in Columbia, South Carolina. I did. Uh, then I moved to Charlotte, and then I moved to Winston Salem. And that's about 100 miles 
ish, and that's about 100 miles. It's good enough for what we're doing. And let's assume it is just straight north. So if I consider Columbia, South Carolina as my starting point, then my displacement here is 200 miles north. If I go with the typical geographic thing where zero, where zero latitude and zero longitude are somewhere in Western Africa, close enough for what we're doing, that doesn't tell me my position. This 200 miles north doesn't say anything. This 200 miles north just says, so that's 200 miles north of where I started. All right, yes, Mike. So in that example, that's your displacement is 200 miles. What's the distance? Is it the same? This is, depends upon how I got here. So let's say I started in Columbia here and I'm going to end up 200 miles north of where I started, but I decided to take the scenic route. The very scenic route. <laughs> and then right there. So I'll look at the car's odometer before I left, and I look at the car's odometer after I got here, and let's say that the, the odometer has a 600 mile difference. So my displacement is 200 miles north. It tells me where I am relative to where I started, but the distance I actually traveled was 600 miles. If I die in the same room where I was born, my displacement for my lifetime would be Indeed. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if the return reward has been the return reward for the past almost 60 years. But once they know I've taught you, we'll make an exception. <coughs> All right, questions up to here. All right, so for the sake of this next little exercise, I'm going to assume that this is zero right there. There's my origin. I'm going to assume that to the right is positive. So the way this game is played is I'm going to call out a quantity, such as position, displacement, velocity, or acceleration. We haven't gotten to the last two yet. And you just tell me if it's positive, zero, or negative. Well, I'm assuming a straight line here. I'm just going to walk back and forth. And also assume that if I'm somewhere around here, it's zero. Even if, if I'm out just a little bit, it might look different to Nathan and Latoya, but it's, this is supposed to be zero if I'm somewhere around here. All right, so my position. Positive. All right, let's see if we can get a couple more voices in on that one. My position. Positive. Ah, much better. My position now. Positive. My position now. Negative. All right, this is the way the game is played. Now, for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to assume this is my starting point right here. I've already established to the right is positive. So right now, my position is? Zero. It's negative, right? It is indeed negative. Because position cares about where I am relative to that. My displacement is? Now, now's the time to throw in zero. All right, let's try that one again. My position? Negative. Negative. My displacement? Zero. All right. My displacement? Negative. Position? Negative. Oh, that was a whole lot less rousing than I was expecting. It is indeed negative. My position? Slowly seeking out. And then my displacement? Positive. There's a starting point over there. Oh. What does that mean? It's still negative? It's still positive. It's positive. Oh. Because I'm on the, because to the right is positive. 
and I'm on the right side of my starting point. Oh, gotcha. All right, so let's run through those three scenarios again. Position? Negative. Negative. Displacement? Negative. Negative. Position? Positive. Displacement? Positive. Let's do position, position again. Position? Positive. Positive. That was negative. 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 Why is it negative? It's on the left one zero. Yeah. yeah. Zero is right there. Do I need to make that darker? Is that this? What happens in a zero? Like, we were talking about numbers and now it's all just positive and negative. Uh, well, I figured it was easier doing positive negatives and zero as opposed to actually putting down meter sticks. No, I was just, I was just wondering. Does that seem too much of a jump? No, I just thought one was like a number and one was negative or positive, like the displacement and the position. Yeah, there, we would associate numbers with it. I mean, if we, however far I am away, I'm just looking at positive, negative, zero for right now. Oh, okay. Well, we can bring numbers back. We will bring numbers back. All right, so position? Negative. Negative. Displacement? Positive. 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 My starting point's over here. Yeah. I'm on the right side. As right as possible. So you need to darken that one, too. That's the displacement over there with a zero, is that? Oh, no, that's your position. Position. This is the displacement. Okay. Somebody, uh, whatever memory trick that you need to do, probably the most common mistake on that, on the Traditionally, the last problem of the test is to mix up position and displacement. Position has an O in it. O for origin. All right, and position? Positive. Displacement? Positive. Questions at the moment? All right, next line of vocabulary, velocity. The symbol for velocity is a V with a vector symbol. And conveniently, velocity and vector both start with the same letter. The scalar analog is speed. And the symbol for speed is basically that, except without the vector symbol. It's V without a vector symbol. And conveniently, speed and scalar both start with an S. So, is velocity the last vector of the list? Say it again. Is velocity the last vector of the list, and now we're switching to scalar? No, well, there's going to be one more line. Oh. So the unit, the international standard units of velocity is the meter per second. Yes, I know we use miles, miles per hour here, but that's not international standard. how fast an object goes and in what direction. So the sign of velocity is what tells you which way you're going. Alternatively, time rate, uh, Jane, I'll write out the words and then I'll do the math equation for the math fans out there. Time rate of change of position. Now, all that means is that velocity is the change in position over the change in time.
Speed is just distance divided by time. Distance over change in time, however much time lasts. All right, so let's go back to our Columbia to Winston-Salem bit right here. I get from, go from Columbia to Winston-Salem, and I took the scenic route, and let's just say that it took 10 hours. So my change in time, or the time that took the time it took to do it was 10 hours. My average velocity, and well, let me emphasize this is average. My average velocity is my displacement divided by time. My speed, average speed, is the distance divided by time. So what is my average velocity? Would it be 60 miles an hour? Mm, not average velocity. So let me jump to the second question, just so Nancy can pipe up again. What's my average speed? Yeah, because the distance I traveled was 600 miles over 10 hours, which is 60 miles per hour. It does not seem safe considering the number of backwards. My average velocity? 20. Keep going. Uh, miles per hour. Or it's a different thing, isn't it? 20 miles per second. Or that unit, the MLRS unit? Yeah, no, we're not dealing international standards right now. I was picking numbers that were vaguely realistic. So, Becca, 